Assalamu alaikum. Today's video will be on one of the pelvic organs, the uterus. In front of you, what I'm holding up is the uterus. But this is not how it appears within the pelvis. The uterus is actually antiverted and antiflexed. Meaning, not only does it tilt forward, but it also bends at the cervical junction. So let's look at the parts first and I'll show you the position on the model because obviously this is a specimen you will not be able to fully appreciate how it appears in the pelvis. So over here on the top side we have the fundus of the uterus. The remaining part is actually the body. The fallopian tubes have been removed from this specimen but the tubes extend outwards and backwards and from there they meet with the ovaries also not visible here. Down below, we have the cervical canal, the cervix portion. You can see how from the uterus down below, it narrows to the cervix. And even below that is the opening of the vaginal tract. If you were to see it from the inside, this is how it appears. You can see multiple layers here. The innermost layer lining the uterus, that is the endometrium. So exactly where you see this pin enters, it's the endometrial lining. And as you go further into the meat of the uterus, you come to the myometrium where you have all the muscles. And the outermost part is the perimetrium. So we have the endometrium, the myometrium, and the perimetrium. Once again, from the uterus body, this is all the uterine cavity, by the way, and you can see how it actually is really small. non gravid uterus, that means a uterus without any sort of uh, conceptus within, non-pregnant. This is normally how it is in size. But as the conceptus implants within the uterus and enlarges and goes into a full uh, fetus, then the uterus will obviously enlarge quite enough to the point that the fundus sometimes even reaches beyond the umbilicus. This thing you're seeing here actually is a fibroid. This specimen, uh, when we took it out, so we found that there was a fibroid located on the back wall of the uterus. A fibroid is a benign tumor commonly found within the uterus. This is not a conceptus because keep in mind that conceptus is actually implants within the endometrium. You don't see it well until it fully grows and by then there's actually a full-fledged uh, fetus. Here is a cervical canal. You can see the internal os opening because it's split. It's not about very prominent. The internal os and the external os. Between we have the cervical canal and as we go down below then we have the opening of the vaginal tract and this is the point where the epithelium also changes from non-stratified to <clears throat> from non-keratinized to the keratinized portion. So the vagina, the cervix, the uterine cavity, and the layers of the uterus. Beside from this, the uterus also has certain vessels, but uh, here the vessels are not that prominent. However, if I were to pass a pin through one of them, here you can see at this point, this is where you have the passage of the uterine artery. It's a, a branch of the internal iliac artery. It ascends upwards and anastomoses with the branches of the ovarian artery. Let's look at this on a model actually. You'll be able to see it much better. Here is how the uterus looks like typically in the pelvis and all the adjacent visceras. Now this is what you're looking at is the front view, how it appears in the pelvis. And this is how it is in the side view. I'm going to just for a moment show you the sagittal section. That is the section that you get when it is halved from the center. And you can see how the uterus is antiverted and antiflexed. Look how it is resting on another viscera, the bladder. It lies directly on top of it. Obviously when it enlarges it will grow upwards. But this is the uterus in its position. Once again we can see the uterine cavity. You can see how it's quite narrow here. The inner lining is the endometrium. Then we have the myometrium and outside the perimetrium. Here you can see once again 
the cervix, internal os, external os. This is your cervix. This is the vagina. And you see the fornices, the anterior and posterior fornix. <coughs> right in front, the bladder and its muscles, its drusal muscles. And uh, obviously from here on we have the urethra. The space between the uterus and the bladder, we call this the uterovesical pouch. And behind the uterus we have, this is your rectum. And the rectum obviously will then go to form the anal canal here. The space between the uterus and the rectum, that space or pouch is known as the recto-uterine pouch, the pouch of Douglas. In uh, certain books they mention how this pouch can be accessed by passing a probe through the posterior fornix to enter right over here. It's also a place where fluid can collect in case of peritonitis. So this is how the uterus is in its in situ position with respect to the bladder and the rectum. The uterus itself is covered with peritoneum superiorly. You see from this view, notice how that the uterus is covered with the broad ligament. This is all peritoneum. It forms like a, a veil on the uterus and this veil actually is termed as broad ligament. So we can see how this broad ligament also extends to the fallopian tube. These are the fallopian tube which I previously mentioned which were not present on the specimen. The fallopian tube goes backwards posteriorly, forms fimbria and meets with the ovaries. Keep in mind there is not a there's a contact between the two but there is space basically whenever an ova is released from the ovaries it is picked up by the fimbria otherwise this fallopian tube opens directly into the peritoneal cavity meaningly any sort of path the pathway established here can allow content from the peritoneum to enter the uterus and vice versa from the uterus into the peritoneum this is how endometriosis happens as well. You know, when you have a reflux from the uterus into the peritoneal cavity and there you have the conceptus forming outside. You can even see the round ligament to the ovary and from the front, the round ligament to the uterus. This is the same which is going into the inguinal canal. Beyond this, if you were to see over here, right next to the ovaries yes right over here you can see one artery coming from above this is the ovarian artery and this artery will ultimately descend and meet with the uterine artery down below the uterine artery is located right over here if you were to follow it you can see how this artery is going down and ultimately it will meet with the uterus and anastomose with the ovarian artery this is establishing the supply of the uterus and uh, there's not much else to point out here this is the only things worth mentioning that would come in your ospi and uh, with that we're done with the uterus next time we'll be looking at some of the other pelvic organs and also including the ones found exclusively in the males thank you so much for joining us Allah Hafiz